Welcome! In front of me I have the brand new OnePlus 10 Pro and today I'll go over unboxing along with a quick overview of this phone. So anyway, let's get started and pop it straight open. You can see the box looks fairly interesting. Uh, we have uh, uh, co-developed with Hasselblad. Uh, I will say press X to doubt. There we go, let's just pop that open. Now, last time I did look at the, what was it, 9? Whichever one was the first one with Hasselblad cameras. I wasn't very impressed, to be honest. It was just a mediocre phone all around. So let's see if anything changed here. And I already know that Jerry Rig did an amazing bent test of this phone, which, uh, well, it didn't survive. There is our little phone. We got a decent charger right here. It is an 80 watts. Actually, that's a really good charger. And then we get our typical OnePlus cable, as you can see. That's basically all we get in the box. So let's just pop that out. There we go. Interesting back design. Now, camera isn't really picking this up. Like, I can't really show this on the camera. It kind of looks more like it's a grayish thing, but it has like weird texture to it, which uh, it looks like it has a bit more bumpy texture, but it's actually not. It is a little bit like a matte finish, but still nice. Now, one thing that I'll mention, the cameras on photos, they look absolutely atrocious. Uh, they really reminded me of uh, one of the Realme photo, uh, phones that had a very similar camera kind of like look design, but this one actually looks uh, much better in person than I, it does on like the promo photos and stuff like that. So uh, that's actually a nice, a pleasant surprise because on the photos it looks horrendous. Anyway, let me just pop this on while we're doing so just to see how that looks like. And there's kind of makes it look a little bit worse. I think I prefer it without the case. Anyway, let's turn it on. There we go. So, um, quickly going into this, uh, right at the front we have our display. It's a 6.7 inch display, 1440p by uh, 3216. And that puts this uh, display density at 525 pixels per inch, so fairly dense, with a 90% screen to body ratio. And that is a uh, fluid AMOLED display. Fluid probably meaning that it's 120 hertz. Uh, it also has 10-bit color, meaning it boasts a 1 billion colors. So uh, the display here is really good. There you go. Um, what else is there to say? We have uh, Gorilla Glass Evictus at the front and Gorilla Glass 5 at the back, plus aluminum frame apparently, though from I guess what I heard it's not the best considering it uh, it can fold unless that's a feature Let's see skip oh oops skip skip anyway and there we go so um there we go, we can see our display. Now, apparently, the, the peak brightness right here is about 1300 nits, and it does get pretty bright. It's not necessarily like the brightest thing I have seen. And uh, the typical brightness is about 1000 nits. Um, I assume the typical and peak uh, refers to like if you're outside and the uh, light sensors pick up like a super bright sunlight, then it will probably boost up the brightness. But for instance, like where I am, it's not uh, utilizing the actual like max brightness that this phone can output. Though I'm just kind of assuming here. So, um, in terms of cameras right here, we have triple camera setup. There we go. As you can see, and plus the flash. And these cameras are 48 megapixel wide, 8 megapixel telephoto, and 50 megapixel ultra wide. Now it's kind of weird that we have a ultra wide that is at a higher resolution than the wide one. 
So anyway, I'll just quickly launch the camera just so we can just get a look how this actually performs. Now I'll take the case off just to, so you can see the phone better maybe. And also wipe the camera because I already smudged it up. There we go. Okay, so let's launch my camera right here. Agree and continue, allow while using up. There we go, good enough. And let's get my little plenty right here. Okay, just a couple photos here so we can see how it looks. See what else we got in uh, the camera mode right here. So we have Pro, Hasselblad Pro mode. We have panorama, movie, slow motion, time lapse, uh, long exposure for like night shots, uh, dual view videos. That is actually usually a, a interesting one where it uses two different lenses uh, to record at the same time and just splits the video uh, side by side. So for instance, you can zoom really closely on one and the other one will still show you a normal view from, well, not zoomed image. And uh, then we have 150 angle. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Uh, tilt shift. I also don't have idea what that is and expand. Let's actually see, tilt shift. Oh, well, that's kind of underwhelming. Okay, so that's one. I'm gonna quickly go into the couple photo modes that we have here just so we can see what it is. And uh, that is just. Nothing really special, I guess. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. And what was the last one? Oh, it's just a fish island. Okay, great. Uh, big whoop. So let's quickly go into these photos. Just so you can see. So here's the fish islands, obviously. Uh, the further you're trying to capture something, the more like stretch it will look like. So right here, uh, this is just a normal shot. Uh, and as you can see, it almost captures the entire desk, though you can see that the desk is like literally bowing right here because of the fish islands. Uh, then, let's quickly go back. Actually, no, we do not want to go back. There we go. Drop the phone, yeah. So this was the... Can you flip? Can you flip? There we go. So this was just the photo. Now it did do like a weird shift. Do I do anything with this? I have no idea why. Okay. Anyway, this is the other mode with like the blur edges. Uh, honestly, it seems a little bit pointless. And then we got the zoom uh, shot from a wide sensor. So the zoom actually did a fairly decent job at capturing a decent amount of details, though it is artificially sharpened to the point that it looks a little bit weird. And here was the normal shot. This one actually came out really good. So there we go. Those are the camera setups. Uh, to be completely honest, for a flagship device uh, at, like, at what this is selling for, I have to say I'm not very impressed with the cameras. Uh, as a casual user, I should add that. I ain't like a professional grade photographer or something like that. So as a casual user, th these cameras aren't necessarily like blowing me away, uh, considering they are really pushing that Hasselblad uh, marking right here. Um, it means nothing to me, basically. Uh, nothing because those photos are just looking bland. I, I can't really say that I'm impressed with them or anything. Uh, for instance, I did do like yesterday, the unboxing of uh, Xiaomi 12 Pro. And this one had similar camera setup, a, bit, a little bit better than this. And yeah, those photos were coming out really good. 
Uh, for a typical user, if I can just take out my phone, snap a couple photos and be satisfied with them, that's all I want. And this phone is on a crappier side compared to the other one. So, anyway, let's move away from the cameras. Uh, actually, before I do that, I'm just gonna touch upon the front one right here. So this is a 32 megapixel wide sensor. Now, I will at the end compare this phone to, like I said, the uh, Xiaomi 12 Pro, just because I think like there are super close in comparison uh, because they share a lot of the features and a lot of um, a lot of the specs so I feel like this would be a good uh, good device to compare it to uh, they have similar price and uh, a lot of similar specs and almost every single aspect so I will say camera wise uh, compared to the other one uh, Xiaomi has better cameras uh, because it, number one has all three 50 megapixel cameras uh, wide telephoto and ultra wide well this one has like 8 megapixel telephoto and uh, 48 megapixel wide one so there we go that's one uh, front ones are the same I do kind of want to point that out because like I said I'm gonna go over what I would consider to be more worth it so um, now the cameras now let's move over to the actual internals and we're looking at a snapdragon 8 gen 1 so basically the best processor right now that I can get and we have also a couple of versions of storage and RAM that we can pick uh, pick from. And the one that I have right here is... Uh, let's see... This is a 8GB with 128 storage. So this is the base model, the lowest tier of this uh, Pro version that you can get. You can crank up the storage by, from 128 to 256, keeping still 8GB RAM. Then we can crank up uh, from uh, from 8 gigs to 12 gigs of RAM with keeping the 256. And we can also crank up the uh, storage even further by uh, or up to 512 gigs of storage. So with every kind of like it flip flops and alters between what gets uh, bumped up every time you pay more money. So you get storage upgrade, and then RAM upgrade, and then again storage upgrade. And let's quickly see. I highly doubt that we do have a expendable storage, but I will check it out nonetheless. And yep, we don't have expendable storage. So if you need more than like 120 or 250, uh, you probably know what you need to go for. Additionally, uh, for a lot of people, if if you don't mind, you can, for instance, plug in something like like this. There we go. Needed to grab it. So you can see this is a USB-C. Uh, it takes us uh, SD card right here, and I can simply plug that in. And I could offload data from the phone. So if, for instance, I record at 8K uh, videos. Obviously that will uh, take up storage quite quickly. So I could just, you know, fill up the storage, then move everything from, from the phone to the SD card and then continue recording again. Uh, that is a option that you can uh, do. And uh, because of that, you can for instance go for the cheaper version of this device you don't have to spec out for like 512 gigs if you need to or if you don't need to uh, and still have a well, modicum of like uh, storage there that you can use or transfer over to so anyway uh, that's the storages and I'll also mention one last thing uh, in terms of storage uh, the device uh, both say UFF UFS 3.1 storage meaning that the phone should uh, deal with anything like uh, the recordings at 8K really quickly because of that storage. It should be reading and writing that really fast. And what else is, what else is there? Uh, we have the battery, which we do have a 5000 mAh battery in here. And as you've seen, we do have this hefty 80 watt charger in the box. And Apparently the advertised charging speeds as uh, is from uh, 1% to 100 in about 32 minutes. And this is the international. There is also North America, which apparently gets uh, 65 watt charger. So that will charge uh, the device up to 58% in 15 minutes. 15, because I think I said it a little bit weirdly. So yeah. Uh, Crappier charger um, obviously equals slower charging speeds. And I don't think you get to uh, pay less for that, so that's a little bit of a bummer, most likely. And one last thing, we do have a wireless charging right here at a hefty 50 watts. So that's actually fairly impressive here. 
Uh, actually, no, not fairly, that's really impressive wireless charging. And yeah, that's basically all the specs of the device. So, uh, lastly, I'll go over the price, which this device, uh, on the side it says it's about 900 euros, but I think it's a little bit more actually. Uh, because uh, for me in Poland, where I am based in, this device costs over 5,000 PLN. Uh, if you're wondering how much that is, it, it's a lot for me. So, 5,000 is about, uh, if I'll convert it right now to, for instance, US dollars, it comes a, a little bit above uh, $1,000. I can actually really check, really quickly check it. So, USD to PLN, just so I can give you the accurate uh, exchange rate right now. So, let's do 5,000. That is uh, $1,100 or 1170 dollars. So this phone is like way out there in terms of price. Considering this didn't even survive a bent test from Jerry Rig, it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit concerning about the build quality of this phone. It might look on paper really nice and all that, as you probably can see. Uh, it it looks nice, it works fine. But if, for instance, I'm gonna put that phone in my pocket and then it comes out in uh, folded state uh, next time. That, that that's over a thousand bucks that has been wasted just because they decided to cheap out on things that you might not know about so there we go uh, and additionally let's be honest oneplus previously was supposed to be the uh, flagship killer so flagship performance at a, a discounted price uh, 1000 and over 100 usd is not a discounted price it is right up there with the effing top of the price chain with all the Samsungs that have their overpriced devices there. So this is no longer what OnePlus stands for. Uh, probably explains why we don't see anywhere anymore the don't settle crap that they used to, well, used to advertise. You don't have don't settle wallpapers. You don't get don't settle anything, a uh, little paperwork or anything that they used to do because they did settle. So there we go. Um, so uh, like I mentioned before, I'm gonna compare this phone now to an other device that I would consider to be much more uh, worth it. Or maybe not much more, but uh, I think like it's a little bit more worth it just because of the cameras uh, particularly. And you also get a 120 watts charger instead of the 80. Now th that is nitpicking, but when we have a phones that are very similarly priced with uh, though the Xiaomi 12 Pro coming at $1,000, not $1,170, uh, and having better specs than this, uh, you get to kind of like start questioning why the F is this costing more when it's actually worse, considering this is supposed to be a flagship killer at a discounted price. So, um, quick uh, comparison between those two. I would show you this phone uh, just as a comparison right here, but they're virtually gonna look the same. With the only difference is the camera on Xiaomi is uh, in the middle instead of on the side. That's basically all the differences. And obviously the uh, back cameras uh, are a little bit differently designed. They don't have this kind of look, they just have a little bit of a different one. Uh, but still, three camera setup. Uh, all the cameras are 50 megapixel, unlike here. We have also 50 watt uh, wireless charging, we have 120 watts uh, fast charging uh, on the Xiaomi. Obviously, I'm right now just uh, sp gonna spit all the specs of the Xiaomi uh, because we already know what we have here. So, uh, 4500 mAh battery, uh, it is smaller than this, so this one has a bigger battery. We have an underfinger display sensor which works really, really fast. Uh, we also have virtually the same display with uh, 1440p, 120 and all that stuff, curved and whatever. And uh, storage-wise, if you need more than 256 storage, uh, then Xiaomi cannot provide that. Xiaomi caps out at 256 12 gigs of RAM, uh, while uh, this one caps out uh, half a terabyte, 512 exactly. So there we go. And both of them do not have expendable storage. And lastly, um, probably the uh, systems. Uh, this one, the OnePlus, is rocking a Android 12, while uh, well, the Xiaomi will be rocking an Android 11. Uh, I didn't look if they're planning to have Android 12. Hopefully they do. Uh, but this one right now has a newer Android. And that's about it.
that, that's basically the only differences and uh, you get to pay for those differences which in certain cases are worse a uh, hundred dollars more you get to pay a hundred dollars more for a crappier charger you get to pay a hundred dollars more for uh, crappier cameras you get to pay a hundred dollars more for increased battery capacity and that's basically all the differences here so at the end of the day those differences uh, there is one positive and two negatives making the Xiaomi on paper be uh, more appealing because it is cheaper and perf no, basically gives you the same performance that's why I don't really recommend probably this device if you don't really want to go for OnePlus if you're just looking for a uh, value for your money uh, I don't think this is it now considering at the same value you can get other flagships basically at the same price this is this right now is priced right at the thing top this is apparently the highest price that you can uh, that you can go for uh, in terms of phones before people start questioning uh, what is wrong with you so 1100 US dollars you this phone competes right now with the top of the top of all the phones at this price you can get the basically like flagship Samsung's making this questionable again because obviously Samsung is Samsung it's more reliable I think even though I don't like Samsung's obviously uh, the the name does have uh, some meaning and the devices aren't bad the uh, S22 what is it plus or ultra whatever they're calling it is an outstanding device it will be a little bit more expensive because I think it comes at around twelve hundred dollars instead of the eleven seventy uh, so wow thirty bucks more and you have uh, a better device uh, with a S Pen and all that stuff making this again questionable why the hell does it exist so that's basically my overview of this phone it's it's honestly overpriced as heck for what it offers because there are phones at this price range that do everything that this phone does but better so I cannot recommend this really it, it just it just baffles my mind how OnePlus just decided to like fail as a company because that's basically what they're doing right now. I used to like OnePlus, for instance, the 7 Pro was an outstanding device. I, I love that phone, but this and like the previous one is just underwhelming. It it's nothing special. It's just an overpriced piece of tech. So yeah, that being said, if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.